at Air Shared Universe Podcast Studio with none other than Ming Chen. Ming, thank you for inviting me and doing this interview today. Of course, anytime. Uh, any uh, any student of uh, Mr. Collins is uh, is is always they're always welcome here. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much. So. I guess since we're here, what inspired you to create this podcast studio? Um, there, it was a combination of factors. Uh, one, I love podcasting. Mm-hmm. I've been doing this for over ten years, and wow. uh, I've, I've been. Th- this is so much fun. Um, I guess the origin, even before that, was uh, I won my own radio show when I was in high oh, school, cool. and uh, that was many, many years ago because I'm really old. <laughs> And oh, um, and uh, like we didn't we uh, you know I I know now there's a, you have a TV and film class yeah um, right. we had a TV and radio class so oh, there was okay. a little studio in our high school awesome we learned how to do a little TV learn how to do a little radio and I was like but the, the you know the radio thing we were just kind of recording and it was just I think they might have broadcast it in the school to give you a feel of what it would be like okay. but I remember asking the teacher I was like hey like how is there any way I can get my own radio station mm-hmm. like broadcast it mm-hmm. and he was like well you know it's the fcc and you know you have to kind of be on a real radio show but if you go out if you go to uh, radio shack a mm-hmm. uh, place called radio shack that doesn't really <laughs> exist anymore you can buy this thing called the transmitter and uh the fc the government will allow you to broadcast under a mile like anybody could broadcast under a mile without wow. having without needing a license and I'm like, whoa, that sounds cool. So I went to Radio Shack. It was like, mm-hmm. hey, man, where's where do you sell these transmitters? I want to start my own radio show. Mm-hmm. And they showed them to me. They were $600. Oh, and wow. Okay. I was in high school. Yeah. <laughs> and minimum wage back then was like uh, like $3 or something. I was wow. like, okay, this is I, they're, they're, that my radio dreams were dashed. <laughs> and then it wasn't until I found podcasting. I was mm-hmm. like, wait, this is kind of like having your own radio station. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. And uh, someone was like, yeah, you record it, it goes on the internet, but the internet is worldwide. You yeah. Know, if you <laughs> just had your own radio station, uh, legally, you would either be under a mile, which, like, who's, you know, who's going to listen to that? Your friends, maybe, that yeah. live in the same area? <laughs> mm-hmm. and Or even if I got a job at a radio station, it would only go to the city that I lived in. But I was like, well, this is worldwide. So, gotcha. um, and uh, I, I, I kind of... I slowly realized, uh, I was like, well, this this could be cool. But um, I was also, I was like, wait a minute, I don't have any radio training. <laughs> I, I have no business doing doing this. And I was really shy, too. So, mm-hmm. you know, it was it was kind of like, yeah, I'm going to start my own radio station. And then I was like, oh, wait, I, like, what what do I know about this? What am I going to talk about? <laughs> Who's going to listen to this? I had a lot of doubts. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I got, got inspired by Kevin Smith, the filmmaker. He started doing this. Mm-hmm. And... Um, he was real good at it immediately because he's a really good storyteller. He was famous already, so he got an audience. But, gotcha. Um, okay. And uh, I saw, and and like, immediately he had like I, his first episode had immediately like three hundred thousand downloads, and then wow. like he's over, like he's way over a million at this point. <laughs> um, I was a guy who would take his recording and put it up on iTunes, mm-hmm. and and so everybody could listen to it. Uh, I did all the technical stuff, mm-hmm. um, so I was like, oh, good for him. He's you know he's doing what I wanted to do in high school. Like I kind of dreamed about it, but you know, he's got the training. He's mm-hmm. he's got the stories. He's got the audience. More yeah. importantly, <laughs> um, but then a couple years after that, he's like, hey, I want you to start a podcast, oh, okay. and I'm cool. like. Again, the doubts came back. I was mm-hmm. like, well, what am I going to talk about? Like, I knew I, I know I, you know, in high school, I, like, I want to start my own radio station, but I never had a plan for it. Mm-hmm. He's like, well, just talk about whatever you love. Uh, and I, I'm like, that's not it. That doesn't count as a show, does it? <laughs> like, I can talk about comic books and mm-hmm. Star Wars and, and my love of food and all that. He's like, that's a podcast. I'm <laughs> yeah. like, really? Um, so he kind of pushed me into it. Okay, cool. Um, because when Kevin tells you to do something, you, you, yeah. do, you, you do it. It, yeah right. And uh, or or you find a way to do it. Yeah, literally about eleven years ago, we were in the back of uh, Kevin's comic book shop in Red Bank. Mm-hmm. We we're sitting around an old beat up poker table with uh, some equipment that we cobbled together, and uh, yeah, I recorded that podcast about comic books, Star Wars, and food. Wow. Okay. And I uh, did it with uh, my my friend Mike Zapsik, who okay. uh, is a part actually a partner here now at uh, a shared universe, and mm-hmm. we were like, wow, that was really fun. <laughs> think anybody will listen to this and I, I listened back to it and i was like well this sounds pretty good mm-hmm. sounds like a real show like yeah. if we put this on the radio i think it, it, it would count as a real show mm-hmm. and um and uh, i was like why we didn't i i was confused though. i was like we didn't have any training like why did that go so well he was like well we, <laughs> you were just talking about stuff that you love yeah exactly. and when you talk about stuff that you love it's um 
it's pretty it's, it's, it's easy to sound like an expert yeah right <laughs> um, like if you talk about your favorite movie you've seen mm-hmm. that movie a million times yeah so you can talk about it like you know it forwards and backwards mm-hmm. because you do in fact know it forwards and backwards from <laughs> watching it 200 times so yeah. uh yeah we had so much fun doing that first episode that we just kept going and uh we've recorded over 300 episodes uh that podcast wow. is now called it's called I Sell Comics. Oh, okay, cool. We talk about comic books. We talk about pop culture. Uh, mm-hmm. We talk about other uh, uh, random topics. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, we, we did that. And then uh, uh, people started listening to it. And we're like, I was like, oh, wow, this is cool. <laughs> uh, you know, random people. We would, I would go to a lot of Comic Cons around the country. And people mm-hmm. uh, in, like, L.A. or Nashville, Tennessee or Orlando would be like, hey, I, I love the podcast. I'm like, you listen? Like, you listen all the way? Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, right. Or, like, Scotland. I remember people in Scotland wow, that listen to the awesome. podcast. And, um, yeah, we were like, wow, this is this is really cool, this worldwide reach. Uh, but then the question started turning at the comic Cons, like, hey, I listen to your podcast. I love your podcast. Mm-hmm. How do I make my own? I oh. want to – you guys sound like you're having fun. How do I do my own? Wow. And, um, uh, you yeah, know – Usually we would be uh, either at the store or at a, at, at a comic con, and I was like, "All right, I I don't really have enough time to teach you everything, but I can give you a quick ten minute lesson, <laughs> I mm-hmm. guess, like what gear to buy or how to upload it or whatever." Gotcha. Um, but we'd always dream that it was like, "Hey, what if we had like a classroom or a studio or something? We could really sit people down for a couple hours, mm-hmm. teach them everything we know, and inspire them to keep." to create a show that they would record weekly like we do. Mm-hmm. And uh, so finally, around 2017, we, we were like, let's do it. Let's yeah, just do why it. not? Cool. So, yeah, we rented some cheap office space in Red Bank, and mm-hmm. uh, we brought all our gear over, and we were just kind of like, all right, we're open for, you know, we, I, we're open for business. So we set up <laughs> an online scheduling system, and, uh, yeah, slowly but surely, people started coming in. And, uh, yeah, we, we've grown pretty pretty well since then. Yeah. <laughs> I can um, see. <laughs> yeah, but that was the genesis of all this. It was, you know, twofold. It was, you know, teaching people who wanted to learn. Mm-hmm. But also, we have so much fun doing this, uh, creating content yeah, and, uh, and podcasting that we want to show other people how much fun it is. Mm-hmm. So did you have any, like, special guests that came on your podcast? Uh, we have uh, Kevin has been Kevin Smith has been in here. Mm-hmm. Um, I think our, our, our biggest one, the one we really kind of geeked out over was uh, back um, – Back in the eight ladies and nineties, uh, there was a, the, I, and she's still a model, but there was a supermodel named Paulina Portskova, mm-hmm. and uh, at, through a weird confluence of events, <laughs> she ended up in the studio. She was doing a local a TED talk in Asbury Park a couple of years ago, okay. and um, and through a weird series of events, they're like, "Hey, do you want to interview her before her TED talk?" We were like, "What? <laughs> like she's gonna come? You're gonna bring her here?" And we're like, and yeah. yeah, we had this little dumpy studio mm. messy i remember I was like, oh, we, we came in and cleaned everything <laughs> and um she came in she was really cool she was mm-hmm. really uh she was awesome mm-hmm. and uh uh it was cool we live streamed the interview and uh that yeah that was a that was a pretty big moment uh, brian quinn from practical Pr- impractical jokers he's okay, uh awesome. he comes in in here every so often so i think <laughs> cool. uh yeah he's a pretty he's a pretty big deal right yeah. now so a uh, cute brian q quinn yeah He's been in here a couple times, um, and then yeah, I, I, yeah, you never know who's going to show up though. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, but those I think those are three big ones for sure. Mm-hmm. Like you were saying earlier, like oh, I can't believe she's interviewing right now. Is it kind of the same thing like at this weekend Garden State Film Festival? Like you weren't expecting who to see? Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they, I saw a list of people who were, who were coming down, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, you never know who's going to show up at a film festival. But uh, I think. Uh, we got, we got the podcast with Daniel Baldwin, which is pretty, awesome. you know, one of the Baldwin brothers. Uh, he's a he's a pretty big deal. Yeah. Um, I think his brother Stephen was supposed to come down, but he had a, he had a medical issue. Okay. Uh, it was cool though. I, um, I mean, it's cool a- interviewing famous people, but I, yeah. I really love interviewing filmmakers. Mm-hmm. So yeah, this past weekend we we went to the Garden State Film Festival and the uh, we've been helping them out the last few years, uh, live stream and podcast with some of their filmmakers leading up to the festival so we can you know, give it's great for marketing mm-hmm. it's great for publicity but it's cool to hear filmmakers in a longer format talk about their films and how you know how they got made and where they succeeded and where they failed and and why they did it um uh you know uh, other than that you know maybe look at a radio interview or somewhere like a really quick you know two or three minute interview it was like mm-hmm. no no come down we'll do it for we'll <laughs> half an hour yeah talk for 40 minutes about your film and then uh, I think it's cool as people can listen to something like that or watch it before the film festival. And then when they get to the festival, it's like, oh, yeah, I know this movie. I, 
-hmm. I saw the whole interview. Mm -hmm. um, this sounded really interesting. So, but uh, this year for the first time, we we're like, hey, can we set up a podcast, like a lounge at yeah. the film festival? Where the filmmakers who are in attendance can all can come down and talk and talk even more about their their films and projects. Uh, it'll be you know very informal interview but fun. Yeah. And they're there already, and mm -hmm. they they can. And I really want to help them promote because. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. That's you awesome. You know, independent film. You spend all this time and money making this film, and then mm -hmm. you know, well, now what? Now you got to yeah. tell people about it. So <laughs> yeah. uh, I think it's the perfect way to promote your film. So we you know we we were it was like a live you know on site. Mm -hmm podcast booth podcast studio and um we end up interviewing uh uh, uh people who made 27, 27 filmmakers basically but they wow. br they brought their some of them brought their cast and crew nice and uh yeah it was it was it was really cool we live streamed it on facebook and youtube and i, I think it was a really cool like ne not really done before element at a mm -hmm. film festival so now yeah. i was like i want to do this at every film festival <laughs> like why why you know why isn't there a podcast room at say like South by Southwest or Sundance mm -hmm. or you know the Toronto Film Festival or can like can you yeah. imagine like hey I should call up France and be like hey can we set up a <laughs> podcast room next year like how yeah. awesome would that be that'd be pretty cool yeah so um, besides the Guard State have you what other festivals have you been to uh, Hang on to your shorts is yeah. <laughs> a is a is a big one um, I, yeah other than that I, yeah I haven't been to a whole bunch of other film festivals so I I love the local ones mm -hmm. yeah uh, one because I can drive back and forth I can go home <laughs> at night yeah um, but two I love seeing film you know but usually they accept films from the from local films from the area yeah that's awesome uh, so I love meeting local filmmakers mm -hmm. uh, because I know yeah I I mean I support local but I um, uh, I I know like they're it's I, they're like truly independent you know they mm -hmm. raise their own money they bought their own gear they cast their own people they wrote their own script and uh, they got their own film made and I think yeah. that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I know you were in um, the North spoof on the office. Oh the yeah, studio. yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> that was very that came together. That was unexpected. Were you in any other kind of student short film? I think before? I've been. In a, I I think I've done a couple other ones. Um, mm -hmm. I can't even remember now, though. <laughs> I think uh, the studio was the big one, though. Uh. Um, I was there to teach podcasting mm -hmm. for a couple hours, and uh, yeah, one of the yeah, they were like, "Hey, we can you stick around and just shoot a really quick scene? Uh, we're doing <laughs> a spoof on the Office called The Studio." Mm -hmm. And uh, I got to play uh, the, uh, the the school janitor mm -hmm. who, by night, when everybody leaves, sneaks in the studio and turns into a kung fu dojo. <laughs> and I thought it was, uh, I thought it was pretty cool. They gave me a broomstick. They're like, just you know, swing this around, and then they're like, kick this tree when you're done. And I kicked it; it broke in half. I was like, oh, oh my oops. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not was, part of the script. Oops. <laughs> yeah, but it was cool. I saw it. I played in a film fe uh, film festival at the uh, Comic Palooza mm -hmm. Comic Con in Houston. Yep. And uh, I, I was like, whoa, this is, it, it was cool. This, this went from Middletown North <laughs> to Houston, Texas, and beyond. I think it, it, went, it got into a couple of film festivals. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's pretty cool. Moving on from film festivals, um, how has your career as in the comic book man helped you in beyond your just everyday life? Um, I think for this, uh, you know, we, we gained a certain amount of notoriety, so... Uh, a lot of people know who we are. Mm -hmm. um, some people don't know who we are, and then when they come here as a client, then they find out who we are. Is that we, you know, we got posters in here, mm -hmm. and I don't really brag about it. I don't really mention it, but mm -hmm. you know, eventually it comes up. So, <laughs> if that makes them feel cooler for coming here, that's that's definitely a plus business wise. Mm -hmm. uh, also, if you if you've ever watched Comic Book Men, uh, there are scenes uh, inside the comic book shop that we shot at. But in between those scenes, we're with Kevin Smith around a table talking to microphones and at first people were like what are they doing like is that a radio show I was like no they're podcasting so we we've been seen you know we're known we're known podcasters mm -hmm. uh you can watch us on a tv show podcasting uh -huh. so if you go to a podcast studio you and you uh, you've seen that or i can point you to that i was like listen we're we're experts like you know there might you know there may be other recording studios around, but these guys know podcasting, and, and you know, see they they were they were podcasting on TV. Like what? That's it's a great commercial mm -hmm. for the studio for sure. So yeah, um, yeah I think uh, though yeah but though that yeah that really helped. And you know, Comic Man came out in 2012, and we were seen podcasting. Uh, I don't I don't think there were any other TV shows or movies that even mentioned podcasting that early on. So wow, I okay. believe I'm pretty sure we're the first mm -hmm. any. TV show, movie, whatever, <laughs> any, you know, kind of mass entertainment format to even mention podcasting. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm pretty proud of that. Yeah, that's. Yeah. An, I mean, um, that was all on Kevin's insistence. Mm -hmm. He was like, "We should be seen. We should do this at a podcast table." And a lot of people are like, "Whoa, what is that? That's different." And <laughs> yeah. but it worked. It worked out really well. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I, I definitely take advantage of being on comic event, you know, marketing wise, mm -hmm. uh, you know, any, sometimes I'll we'll come with print ads or, you know, Instagram ads or whatever. And, uh, you know, at the bottom, you'll always see, you know, brought to you by Ming Chen, Mike Zapsik from Comic Book Men. That's um, very cool. <laughs> you know, because why wouldn't I use that to yeah, market? Right? Yeah, why, Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, we were on TV podcasting. Now, you know, now meet them in real life. So mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. Yeah, that is cool. So um, you talk about Kevin Smith a lot, yeah. obviously, because why not? But um, so how has he had an impact in your life? Uh, geez, I, it's, <laughs> it's all more immeasurable. Um, uh, I got connected with Kevin because I made a Clerks fan website mm -hmm. in 1995. Okay. And he saw it not a couple months later, and he ended up hiring me That's amazing. to build his online presence in the mid 90s. Wow. Um, so he wanted a what he even that early on, he was like, "Hey, I want a website. I want um, some kind of message board to communicate with my fans, um, and I'm going to interact with my fans online." And this cool. was in 1996. Uh, I, I don't think it wasn't until maybe 10, 12 years later and there, uh, uh, you know, when we had a thing called Twitter or Facebook, mm -hmm. Instagram, where celebrities now, it's not a big deal. Like they get into fights with each other. Online yeah. now, right? <laughs> but back then, nobody was doing that. So mm -hmm. he got very early on. He was like, hey, I want an online presence. I think this Internet's going to be really big. <laughs> he was and, right. <laughs> yeah. And I think he was the, he thought it was cool. It's like, hey, I can get feedback from fans all around the world. It's like, hey, what did you like about my movies? Like what? Uh, and. I have this coming up so mm -hmm. he can he could announce and tease things that he was working on cool. and just hang out with people online i think yeah. that's what he really wanted to do was just hang out with people who like the same stuff that he did mm -hmm. and uh so uh but i was just a kid from michigan i was in college when all that happened mm -hmm. and you know here i was i was meeting a guy who made a movie that i really loved two you know a couple movies at that point clerks and mall rats mm -hmm. uh two movies i really loved and the guy who made them seemed really cool, you know, and, and he was in Hollywood, you know, yeah. he, he got into the Hollywood system. He was, it was, uh, yeah, that, that, that was pretty life changing. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, like he ended up hiring me full time and, uh, introduced me to podcasting, put me on his TV show. And, awesome. uh, I mean, just a, a, a really positive influence mm -hmm. all around. Um, I think when you work with a guy like Kevin, like whatever, he's like, Hey, uh, can you do this? Or I'm like, no, but I'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. You know, you immediately, um, you know, he, 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 he would, he would present some, some pretty cool challenges. Mm -hmm. It's like, Hey, can you throw a two day, all day film festival with all my <laughs> movies and we're going to fly the cast in oh, wow. and, uh, you know, uh, some, you know, sell tickets online somehow and, and get this all organized. I'm like, oh, all right, done. I'll find a way to do it. And like, I never done this before, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I figured out, uh, how to do that, mm -hmm. you know, or, you know, I can you build this website, you know, all, you know, whatever. Can mm -hmm. you start podcasting? Can you, you know, Hey, I'm going to throw you on a TV show. Like this is all stuff I never did before, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, if he wants it done, you you figure out you figure a way out, and uh, yeah. I think everybody needs like a Kevin Smith in their life to <laughs> to motivate them to mm -hmm. to encourage them. Uh, so yeah, his impact on my life has been <laughs> pretty. Uh, it, 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 there's no way to measure it, mm -hmm. um, but it's been it's it's been pretty it, it's been pretty awesome. Like all the cool, pretty much all the cool stuff I've done in my life has been uh, because of him. Wow. Okay. Cool. Um, so in college, were you majoring in film or anything <laughs> like that? No, I was just, uh, I, I, I loved, mo I like watching movies. Mm -hmm. That was about it. I, uh, when I was in college, I, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, gotcha. It was kind of like, all right, I got accepted. Now I'm here in college and people are like, well, what are you going to major in? I was like, I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There And people are like, well, what do you like? I'm like, I like comic books and video games. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, that's not a major. Back then it wasn't. Mm -hmm. I think now you. Yeah, I think you like can, illustration. You can, yeah, or you can major in like esports mm -hmm. or, you know, things like that. You can, you know, you can make a living playing yeah. video games or, you know, in the video game world. Uh, mm -hmm. Whereas back then I just got laughed at. You know, oh, people will be mm -hmm. really, yeah, everyone, no one's going to, no one's ever going to pay you to love pop culture and play video games. Mm -hmm. I remember I got told that over and over wow. again and I was like, well, maybe they're right. So, mm -hmm. um, I tried to find a real major. So, uh, one time I was going to major in like, uh, economics mm -hmm. and that's, that's boring. Yeah. You know, who wants to, you know, supply side economics and pie charts. That's, that's not, that's no fun. Mm -hmm. Not to me. It isn't. Yeah. Somebody, uh, you know, mm -hmm. some people out there it is mm -hmm. 
um, my grandparents were Chinese pharmacists, so my mm-hmm. parents were like, well, maybe maybe that's something you could go into. And I'm, I find I'm really bad at chemistry. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not my it's not. <laughs> It's not my passion. You know, I wish somebody would have told me back then. It's like, just major in whatever you like doing. Yeah. I guess we, I couldn't, re- I really couldn't, though. There was no, you know, pop culture major. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I went to school in Michigan. So there was no film. I don't think Michigan had a film program. Gotcha. Back then. Okay. So I couldn't, you know, there was no major for watching movies really good. <laughs> Whereas now, you know, there kind of is. Mm-hmm. Or you can actually go out and create them now, too. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I was. I felt actually, yeah, I felt pretty lost. Like really, the first three years in college, mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and I was like, you only get four years. So I was like, what yeah. do I do now? But during that time, I discovered uh, the internet. Um, mm-hmm. I learned how to build websites, and that's something I became really passionate in. Mm-hmm. Uh, I learned how to build websites really early, and uh, that's why I made that Clerks fan website. I, I mm-hmm. watched Clerks. I loved Clerks. Um, I wanted to channel my fandom into something. I was like, well, I should build a website. You know, I should, uh, and I'll make it the best website out there because I love this movie. <laughs> I'm going to show people how much I love this movie. And mm-hmm. honestly, I was hoping maybe Kevin would see it and email me. Mm-hmm. That's it. And be like, hey, good job. Uh, instead, he hired me. So That's amazing. Yeah, like, yeah. step up. <laughs> like, yeah. So I tell everybody, I was like, just do whatever you love doing, do that. Mm-hmm. Um, even, you know, maybe right now it seems like, well, you know, no one, you know, there's no major for it or no official program mm-hmm. or it seems like people no one's gonna pay you to do that um somewhere somehow you'll you'll figure <laughs> it out uh, because now yeah people do get paid to play video games sometimes yeah. a lot yeah people do get paid to love pop culture in mm-hmm. some way or the other you know you could uh you know you start a pop, pop culture podcast mm-hmm. or a blog or a website or a youtube channel and who knows that could blow up so yeah so what were your parents' reactions to when they heard about Kevin Smith reaching they, out to you? They still don't they they still don't know what I do. I oh. think they still want me to get a real job. Oh, okay. Yeah, they still want me to go to law school or, or Gotcha. Or, um yeah, they still don't they still don't really get it. I think uh I think they kind of got it. My parent uh, I I I have podcasts with my mom and dad. Each, oh, okay, cool. And I think they sort of understand it. <laughs> But okay. not really. And, mm-hmm. you know, they're worried for me during the pandemic. They're like, is anybody coming in? I was like, no, no, I figured it out. We moved everybody online. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I got this. Yeah. I got this. But even, yeah, I think that even the whole TV thing baffled them. Gotcha. Like, they couldn't process why anyone would put me on TV, oh. I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, don't, I just don't think they really understood it. So, mm-hmm. um, and, uh, yeah, like, they know who Kevin is. I, they've never seen any, any of his movies. They know oh, he's okay. a director. Gotcha. They know he's a filmmaker, but mm-hmm. other beyond that, I think everything just kind of is that, like they can't wrap their head around it. <laughs> so, um, I yeah, I've kind of given up trying to explain everything to them. So, well, it's a very cool career you've made for yourself. I think so. Yeah, <laughs> I wake up every morning. I'm like, you know, I can't wait to be here. Like this place is really awesome, mm-hmm. and we have another studio in Eaton Town, yep. which you guys have been to. That place is awesome. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know we got to pull, uh, you know get do things like uh, podcasts at a film festival. That's yep. that's awesome. Or go to comic cons and mm-hmm. um, yeah, who knows it'll, where it'll grow from there. I mean, I think podcasting should be a part of every major event. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely, you should make it a part of every major event. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying for sure. And then I think I think everybody should podcast. Mm-hmm. I think everybody has a story or something they want to talk about and it you know they don't have to you don't have to do it every week you could do it whenever you want mm-hmm. um but it's uh i think it's uh, uh i think from from you know 20 years ago where we there was no way to do this mm-hmm. you, to talk to record yourself and then put it out to the world for yeah. other people to listen and now we have it. it's very easy like mm-hmm. you can literally push a button or and go live on facebook or whatever yeah. i think everyone should be taking advantage of that mm-hmm. um you know, I mean, for for me, you know, the technology didn't exist. It it was just a dr- a pipe dream, like a sci-fi construct <laughs> years ago, and now we can do it. I'm like, why, you know, why why aren't why wouldn't you do this? Yeah, uh, right. It's fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you know, whether it's you know, you starting a YouTube channel, podcasting, uh, creating TikTok content, whatever. Yeah. I think everyone should be taking advantage of it. Yeah, definitely. Um, so for all the viewers watching, do you have any advice for anybody watching this? Uh, I, I, my advice is always just, uh, you know, whatever you love doing, uh, just keep doing it. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, find out a way to e- get even better doing it. And uh, I think that it, and when you get better, you're going to love it even more. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, um, find other people who also love doing what you do. Uh, collaborate with them. Mm-hmm. Talk to them. Ask them questions. Hang out with them. Uh, help each other out for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. And um, 
and uh yeah dev you know pour pour all your your heart and soul into it you know stay up late hours <laughs> doing whatever you know if you love uh yeah you know you, youtube videos if you love editing if you love filmmaking mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there, there, there'd be those nights where you love it so much where, you know, you're working out all of a sudden, the, you know, oh, oh, the sun's up. It's 630 <laughs> in the morning. It's like, whoa, and you want to keep going, you know, get some rest, wake up, do it all over again. Mm -hmm. um, that's, you know, that find what you find the thing that you live for and, and do that because uh, it usually works out. And then, you know, th there might be people who be like, oh, you can't do that. That's mm -hmm. that's silly. That's stupid. Uh, you know, you can't uh, you know, you can't can't find a job doing that. Um, you know, prove them wrong. Yeah. Prove them wrong. Just like you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you again, Ming, for inviting me to this podcast studio. Always, anytime. And for doing this podcast. So, yeah. Absolutely. Thanks, everybody. Okay, cool. And before I go, my uncle actually has some questions. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> He's a big um, Marvel fan. Oh, cool. I'll okay. see if I can answer these. Uh, yeah, some of these are <laughs> hardcore, like, comic book questions. Like, uh. <laughs> okay, he says, Okay. My uncle and my friends talk about Star Wars, Marvel, DC, Game of Thrones okay. all the time. Should they start a podcast? Oh, oh, my goodness. And what is your advice for how they can get their opinions heard? That's a great question. Um, loving Marvel, DC, Star Wars, Game of Thrones. That's, that's why that was my first podcast. Mm -hmm. That's why I started podcasting. We, uh, you know, uh, we would argue about these things at the comic book shop all four mm. of us or we would be out to dinner or wherever and we would argue about them and the thing about that is, and we would argue passionately mm -hmm. about it like it was it was life or death <laughs> and but the thing about that is you argue and then your your conversation goes into the ether like that's yeah. it no mm -hmm. one ever hears it again gotcha. and i always thought they were great brilliant conversations and i was always like why aren't we recording this we mm -hmm. should be recording this like this and and uh, and i meet other people who do this like i'm like why aren't you guys recording this this is a podcast yeah you're gonna find other people who love marvel dc star wars game of thrones they're gonna listen to it and either agree with you or disagree with you but mo most importantly they're gonna listen to you mm -hmm. and interact with you and either go like yeah man that's it that yeah you're right or no you're completely wrong what are you talking about either way it's interaction mm -hmm. And um, so, uh, I that that's the perfect podcast. That is the reason you should be <laughs> starting a podcast. And uh, yeah, it's cool. I and I and I love arguing with my friends. Sometimes they're right. Usually, mostly, you know, for the most part, they're wrong. Yeah. And uh, it's cool. And then you can bring in, you know, a guest every mm -hmm. few every so often and argue with them about some kind of point. And it's fun. Mm -hmm. It's fun to hear other people's opinions as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, even with the advent of you know Zoom or like a Streamyard. You don't. They don't even need to be here. Yeah, <laughs> you can bring them in remotely. So if they're in another state or even another country, you mm -hmm. could that and you could record with them, and have a podcast. But the the greatest thing is when you've recorded that. Uh, it's it's basically permanent. You have that mm -hmm. recording forever. So yeah. twenty years from now, you could play that back and la and laugh at yourself or <laughs> or just remember that time mm -hmm. that you had with your friends recording that podcast. But beyond that, you put it online. You know, you'll you will build an audience. So you'll get yeah. other people listening to that, and that's. That's a pretty that's a pretty big thrill <laughs> when you find out people you don't even know have listened to it and they mm -hmm. and they and they enjoy it or they just eat, agree with you and sometimes even they disagree with you it's not a, it's not a bad thing so yeah yeah cool thank you and one other question he says my uncle also believes that Rebels is hand down, hands down the best Star Wars story told to date I, I thoughts <laughs> oh yeah for sure. Um, I actually haven't even finished it yet, but I think there are five seasons, maybe more. Oh, but wow. yeah, Rebels is is is, uh, is absolutely amazing, and um, uh, it's cool. A lot of the elements from Rebels you'll see now in The Mandalorian and all the Star Wars properties mm -hmm. coming up now. So it's uh, you know obviously a big influence on <laughs> on uh, on it, it's been a big influence ever since it's been out. Um, so yeah, I highly recommend that you uh, ever any anybody who even likes Star Wars watches Rebels. Uh, mm -hmm. um, it's cool to see. Uh, you know, it's it's you know it's animated, so they can they're not limited to yeah you know, they can do whatever they want because you can animate whatever you want. But mm -hmm. the stories are somewhat really really deep and awesome too. So cool. Yeah, your uncle seems to be a pretty cool guy. <laughs> yeah, he's really similar he, to you. He should start a podcast. He should. For okay, sure. great. I will tell. Oh, he can watch it. Yeah, <laughs> I'll yeah. tell him too. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, so thank you again, Ming, for answering all of our questions. You got it. And I'll see you sometime soon. For sure. <laughs> Thanks, everybody.